What is up everyone, Code Code29 is back with a brand new video, and in today's video we're going to be doing part 1 to our Roblox Advanced Scripting Series. Now I've had a lot of requests for this series, and I'm going to go ahead and start it now, um, but I do want to clear something up before we get started. Now we are, I am doing this series, but I'm also not going to be doing a video like every week, like the beginner scripting series. It'll be more kind of just um, thrown in uh, every so often, right? Um, and that sort of thing. But today we're doing part one, and uh, it's going to be all about tables. Now I should have added this to my beginner scripting series, so you do not want to miss this one. Let's dive right into tables. So what are tables? So tables are basically um, very. They can be stored in a variable, and they are a list of objects or a list of strings or whatever you want to put. It's a list of something. Okay. And what we can do is we can say local my table, I'm showing you this by the way, uh, all about tables today in a plugin called in command. Uh, it does the same thing as a script if you want to just use a script and hit play uh, that works or you can go get in command really helpful plugin. Um, it's just like I think it's a hundred robux or something like that. But anyway we can say local my table equals to and then you need curly brackets alright so that's what a table looks like with these curly brackets and we've now created our first table. Now, uh, let's actually go ahead and not name it my table. Let's let's name it um, local uh, food table. All right, and then let's put some food in here, right? So like pizza and um, hot dogs, <laughs> and uh, you know what? Let's just put cheese in here. Oh, that reminded me of burgers. All right, so we have this list of foods. All right, so that is what we do with tables we can create a list and now we can just say print food table and if we run this I'm gonna go ahead and run it you could also just play it if you're doing this in a real script in the output you'll have this little thing alright so go ahead and click this little drop down and it's gonna open up it's going it's going to have printed your table so it's saying number one is pizza number two is hot dogs number three is cheese and number four is burgers alright so that is really cool we've created our first table but what else can we do with tables there are four um, things I'm going to show you right now. Uh, there's table.insert, table.remove, table.concat, and table.find. All right, those are the four we're going to go through today. And let's go ahead and start with table.insert. So we can say table.insert, and now use some regular, um, not square brackets, sorry, uh, parentheses. And we can just say one comma, uh, let's think of another food. Let's go ahead and do um, chicken, I guess. That's fine. And if we now go ahead and print food table, I'll explain this in a second, but I just want to show you what's going to happen. And go ahead and run this. Oops. Invalid argument number one. Whoops, my bad. Um, first, we need to write food table, comma, one, comma, chicken. Now let's go ahead and run this. And we will see that we have chicken right here, okay? So, what have we done right here? Well, we've basically said, this is, ta so table has all sorts of different functions. Insert is one of them. So if we write table.insert, we're going to add a new item to a table. And we first have to tell, them, tell it what table we're going to add it to. So we told it the food table. And then what spot we're going to put it on. I said one, so that's the first spot in the table. So it's going to take place of pizza. So basically, this is what our... Uh, this is what our table looks like now, and this is what we're going to add to the table, the chicken, all right? So that's table.insert. Next is table.remove, and table.remove uh, is the same thing. We do table.remove parentheses and tell it what table we would like to do, or work with. And then we have to give it an index, okay? So what we do here is we look uh, and we give it a number, and it's going to get rid of whatever that number, or whatever is in place of that number, okay? So let's just say 3 and go ahead and run this. I'll show you what happens. So let's run it. And our table now looks like this. Pizza, hot dogs, burgers. Where did cheese go? Well, we removed it because we removed the third thing in the food table, right? We removed the third item in our food, food table, okay? So it's pretty simple there. Uh, that is table.remove. Let's go ahead and do concat. So table.concat, um, we can just say food table. And now if we play this, or if we, sorry, not play it, run this, there's literally nothing that's going to happen. It's just going to look like this because, uh, we haven't told it what we want to do yet. Uh, most 
for most of the functions, or for the remove and add, uh, sorry, insert and remove, you just, it did it to the table, but this is, we're not even telling it what to do with this concat table, all right? So we can actually say print table.concat food table, and now I'll go ahead and run this. Whoa, pizza, hot dogs, cheeseburgers. <laughs> so basically what this does is it puts everything in the table together without parentheses, without quotation marks, without brackets, right? It just puts them all together, and it uh, lines them all up without commas or anything like that. And um, t just so that you guys know, I forgot to mention, uh, when you make a table and you do this, you always need a comma to separate each of the items, okay? Always need a comma. So that's what table.concat means or does and if we don't want to do print like that what else, the other thing we can do is just say food uh, right before we can just say food table equals to table dot concat food table so we're just setting it equal to that now and now we can go and say print food table and it'll work just fine yep there we go so that's concat and let's do one more and this one is table dot find so what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna say print table dot find all right and then we can say food table comma pizza now if we go ahead and run this what do you think it's gonna print so this is one's a confusing one so don't worry if you got it wrong what it's going to print is actually one now why is it gonna print one well let me just prove it to you really quick I ran it and it printed one and that's because it found pizza and now it's printing the index of it right so this is called the index this is pizza is number one hot dogs number two cheese is number three and burger is number four so it printed the index of, of pizza it found pizza and now it printed the index okay but what if we said table uh, dot find or print table dot find food table comma um, hat. All right, that's not a food, but it's and it's not in our table. So what do you think it's gonna print? Well, it's actually gonna go ahead and print nil. So nil basically means that it wasn't found in this situation. Okay. So what we can do with this, it's actually really helpful because what we can do is we can say if table dot find. Right, we can use an if statement. Food table comma, and then we can say pizza. Then. Uh, and then we can say local index equals to table dot find food table comma pizza and then we can say remove or, or sorry not remove table dot remove and then we can say food table comma index and then we can go ahead and print it print food table and what do we have here? We have just removed pizza from our table without even saying which, uh, without saying the number. And how did this work? That's because remember when we say local index equals to table dot find food comma pizza, it's going to set this variable to one because it found pizza and pizza is in the first spot. And then we can use table dot remove food table and then index and it will remove the first thing in the list because we set index equal to one or wherever the pizza was found, okay? So I'm recording over this because I really want to make sure I get one point in there really quickly. Um, you can also use this to um, find players, right? So you can say, um, you know, you can make a table and then insert all the players with a for loop, but then you can say if table.find and then the player's name. So that way, if you don't really know what the player's name is, then, uh, sorry, if you don't know where in the table the player is, you can just use table.find to find their name and then use that as an index. I hope that made sense. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Just follow the rest of the video and you'll be just fine. That's a little more advanced. And I want to mention something before we move on. Um, we did four I comma V in pair loops in our beginner scripting series, and I did kind of a bad job explaining this. With those, with those in pair loops, um, we are looping through tables every time. So we can loop through this table, right? And we can print B. I'm going to explain something else in a second, but it's just going to print everything in the list, right? Oops. 
sorry, not then, it should be for I come up to be in Pear's uh, food table do. And it's going to print all of them. And something I want to say really quickly. I is for index. V is for value. Okay? So if we print the value, the value is whatever this thing is in the table, right? If we have hot dogs, that's the value of number two. And index, I, is going to be uh, two for hot dogs, right? So we can go ahead and print index comma value, and it will go ahead and print one pizza, two hot dogs, three cheese, four burgers, right? Because it's the index and then the value. So the index of pizza is one, and the value is pizza. So something we can do uh, if you if you would like to try it is you can you know loop through all the players use the index to like um, find uh, you can like name a couple of parts one and two and loop through those um, using two number if you know how to do that don't worry about that if you don't but I just thought that I would um, go ahead and clear that up that is pretty much tables um, there's there's actually so much more you can do with tables but that's like the basics of it. Um, feel free to play around with it. Also, I'll leave a link to the description in, uh, to a helpful website that talks about different things you can use with um, tables and different functions. But with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure to subscribe, and if you know somebody who would be interested in seeing this uh, first episode of the series, then go ahead and share it with them. Uh, and signing off for now, see you next time. Thanks for watching.